Hey, it's me. I've been noticing that deep down, many of us are really hungry for something more, something spiritual. We take care of our bodies, feed our minds, and even our emotions get some attention, though not always in the best way. But when it comes to nourishing our spirits, we often neglect them. There's a lot of confusion about what spiritual nourishment truly means. I think it's not just about reading or learning about spiritual truths, laws, or even about God and creation, although that's all important. It's not even just about prayer and meditation, although again, those are important. The most essential part of spiritual nourishment, I propose, is self-development. Your inner self, that divine spark within you, is constantly yearning for this growth but often we ignore that longing. When you feel sad or down, or if you're unhappy with your life, even if there's no like obvious clear reason, it's usually because your spirit is feeling starved. True happiness and fulfillment come when we engage in this inner growth. Everyone has the opportunity to find happiness. It's really in our own hands. Often, we look in the wrong places. We might blame others for our problems or think that fate or even God is against us. We might feel that the world is unjust. We don't take that crucial step toward fulfillment by living our lives in a way that aligns with what our creator envisioned for us in this lifetime. This path looks different for each person. Not everyone is meant to fulfill their life's purpose in the same way. The key to remember is that if you're not feeling truly happy, even if there are some challenges in your life, it might be because you're denying your spirit the nourishment it needs, likely through neglecting self-development and self-understanding. If you're hearing this, you have the means to give yourself that nourishment. Now, in earlier chats, we talked about attitudes, attitudes that can block our connection with the divine. We talked about how pride, self-will, and fear are at the root of our faults and the unhappiness and untruths in our souls. So continuing on this journey of self-development, I wanted to bring up something new today. Shame. There's a healthy kind of shame and an unhealthy kind of shame. The healthy kind is true repentance. Without it, we'd have no motivation to grow or to face the challenges of overcoming our lower selves. It's constructive and positive. Whereas the unhealthy kind is what we might call a guilt complex and is destructive. When we experience this unhealthy shame, even if we're not fully aware of it, our emotions are telling us, I'm hopelessly bad and nothing can be done about it. And this mindset leads to self-pity and keeps us from actively working to eliminate what's wrong within us. It becomes unreasonable because we start demanding respect and love from others, even though we don't respect or love ourselves. And this lack of, res- lack of self-respect isn't because of our flaws or mistakes. It's because of this unhealthy shame that makes us passive when we should be taking action. And this just creates a vicious cycle. The more we avoid experiencing constructive shame, the kind that would motivate us to acknowledge our flaws and work on them, the more we end up despising ourselves. As we lose self-respect, we crave more validation from others to fill that void. But no amount of external appreciation can replace the self-respect that comes from living in alignment with our own spiritual values and just doing our best in self-development. Often, we don't consciously think these exact thoughts. But if you take a moment to examine your feelings, you might find this is what's happening underneath. Remember, your lack of self-respect isn't due to your faults or weaknesses. It's because of the wrong kind of shame. Once you replace that with the right kind, 
a more constructive kind of shame, accepting yourself as you are and committing to grow, you'll start to develop genuine self-respect even before all your faults have disappeared. You don't need to be perfect to respect yourself. You just need a realistic and constructive attitude toward your imperfections. As you build self-respect, you'll find you don't need to rely so much on others for validation. This shift will also change how others perceive you, making it easier for them to offer the love and respect you wanted all along. It might not have occurred to you, but this unhealthy shame actually stems from pride and even reinforces it. It sounds a bit contradictory, but consider this. When we refuse to accept ourselves as we are, we're lacking the humility to face everything about ourselves. That's pride at work. Okay, let me try and hammer this home even further. While we know intellectually that we're not perfect, our emotions often resist this truth. There's sometimes a gap between what we know in our minds and what we feel in our hearts. Our emotions might demand perfection before we've earned it. We might unconsciously place ourselves on a pedestal without having done the work to be there. When we realize we're not there yet, instead of accepting it and working toward improvement, we might become angry at ourselves or the world. And it's this unhealthy shame that's tied to pride, laziness, injustice, and escaping from reality. It's this attitude, not our actual faults, that makes us feel guilty. The only realistic and constructive way to change is to accept ourselves as we are now, imperfections and all, and to build from there, step by step. This acceptance doesn't mean we want to stay imperfect. It just means acknowledging where we are as the starting point for growth. Because of pride and the need for others' respect and love, we might start hiding our true thoughts and feelings behind a wall. We might fear that if people knew the real us, they'd reject us. So we create a mask, a false self, to show to the world. But this only deepens our self-despair and makes us feel even more alone. As long as we feel sad, bitter, or out of harmony when we confront our faults, we haven't truly accepted ourselves. We need to find that middle path, accepting our current state without wanting to stay there forever. It's also important to check if we're wanting others to love us despite our faults as a way to avoid changing. Once we bring these unconscious feelings into awareness, we can start to redirect in healthier ways. When we can genuinely accept ourselves without trying to appear better than we are, we've met the basic requirement for this path of self-development. Otherwise, it's just like we're preparing to start. The wrong kind of shame keeps us stuck and prevents us from moving forward. This unhealthy shame also leads to loneliness. If you often feel alone or misunderstood, it's worth considering that this inner attitude might be contributing to those feelings, not just others' lack of understanding. By turning inward and examining ourselves from this perspective, we could start to heal that loneliness. I mean, think about it. You might be ashamed of something big or small, and you hide it, pretending it doesn't exist. That creates a wall between you and others. You might think that if people knew the real you, they wouldn't love you. And that makes you feel isolated and insecure. Only you can change this. The remedy, the solution, is to break down that wall of shame and be who you really are. It might seem hard at first, but it's the only way to find true security and genuine appreciation from others. People who are capable of real love won't love you any less for being authentic. In fact, they'll likely love you more. And those who aren't capable of genuine love might withdraw. Their approval wasn't truly fulfilling anyway. 
Now, I want to stress that this doesn't mean you have to share your deepest secrets with everyone. Choose the right person. A trusted friend, a counselor, someone who can help you, that you trust. Then with the people you're close to, let them see the real you. It's more about your inner attitude than what you say. What you say doesn't really matter. To shift from the wrong kind of shame to the right kind, you need to delve into your emotions and translate them as best you can into clear thoughts. When you see the unreasonable expectations your immature side holds, you could start to address, address them and adjust them. This leads to true self-respect and security. Hiding behind a facade only deepens self-doubt. True repentance is about taking an honest look at yourself, accepting your weaknesses, and having a genuine desire to change. It's about humility. When you stop trying to appear better than you are, even to yourself, you can then begin rebuilding on a so solid foundation. If you have the courage to face your faults repeatedly and keep trying, you're on the right path. You'll start to overcome pride and falsehoods even before all your imperfections are gone. If you become despondent every time you stumble, that's a red flag. Know that's the unhealthy shame holding you back. And don't be discouraged if progress feels slow. Sometimes struggling with a persistent fault can teach humility and self-acceptance, which are more valuable, much more valuable than quick success. Remember, many of these patterns have been with us for a long, long time, maybe even across lifetimes. Change takes time and that's okay. So hopefully you're getting a sense of why it's important also to talk openly about yourself with someone you trust. Keeping things hidden can destroy your perception. An objective perspective can help you see things more clearly. Opening up is an act of humility and can often bring immediate relief, even when there's no specific advice being given. I mean, I witness this when I work with others. At this stage in my career, I notice that I offer advice less and less. Because often that's not what people truly need. They don't need advice. More often they simply need a safe and supportive space to truly be themselves, to be able to talk honestly and openly. Our spirits suffer when we act against our own inner truths. When we reveal ourselves honestly, we align with the laws of fellowship and love, and we start to heal. So if you're feeling a nudge to grow in this way, consider it a call. You have the choice to step forward or to retreat further into hiding. I can promise you, choosing to be authentic brings a profound sense of relief, victory, happiness, self-respect, and inner peace. We often deal not just what, with what we consciously know, but also with hidden aspects of ourselves. Uncovering these deeper layers requires openness and courage. If you're willing to take that step, help will come. The grace you need will be there, especially when you approach this path with humility and patience. One last thing. Sometimes we're actually attached to some of our faults. We might even be proud of them. Recognizing that is important too. So you may want to ask yourself, how would I feel if someone else displayed the same fault? And that can help you see it in a new light and begin to let go of that attachment. I'm here for you and I'm happy to help you explore any of these feelings or challenges. Remember, every fault is a distortion of something good within you. By understanding and working through them, you're moving closer to your true self. And that is awesome. Take care and know that you're not alone on this journey. Love you. Connect soon.